Don't overlook this huge social security benefit, my friends. I'm telling you, a lot of people do, and they just, oh, oh. What's the point of retirement? Retirement is what? What's the point when it comes to financial planning? It's to ensure we don't run out of money, first and foremost. All right, everyone gets that. We want to ensure we don't run out of money. All right, so what did we do previous to retirement? We saved, we saved, we saved. All right, so we saved. We got all of this up here in savings in a retirement account of some sort, an IRA, 401k. On top of that, we're going to draw Social Security. So we got these two legs of the stool, if you would. We got the IRA, 401k, slash Social Security. All right, now what happens in the markets? Are the markets guaranteed? Fundamentally, they are not guaranteed. That's just a fact. I know everyone knows this. But stocks for the long run, in the long run, the markets have prevailed. Okay, the long run may never happen because in the long run, you are dead, if that makes sense. In retirement, what happens is you're pulling money out of your portfolio. Simultaneously, some years, the portfolio is going down. It's a double whammy. You're no longer adding money to it. You're no longer earning an income from labor in which you can, you, which you can defer taking money out of your 401k or IRA. You're pulling it from that account right now. I, can, I hope this makes sense. You're no long, you can't defer taking money out of your IRA or 401k like you could while you're working because you have no other income. Social Security, we're going to talk about in a second. So we need this portfolio to sustain us through retirement. Income security income security a la social security security in retirement i'm telling you the issue isn't if we're going to capture 100 percent of the upside of the markets is we need to have income security I, I cannot stress this enough it's no longer about accumulation get out of the mentality of saying oh my goodness i gotta get 12 percent like the market <laughs> you you gotta say no i gotta protect my income security income security is key now, we can talk about inflation, all that, in terms of, well, my income security is getting eaten alive by inflation. Okay, we're gonna, we'll get into that 100% because this is, this is the mistakes we make. All right, so we're going to look at Social Security here. We got a PIA, that's your primary insurance amount, the amount you get at your full retirement age. We'll just say 67 is our full retirement age. Our PIA is 3000 bucks a month if I wait till I'm 67. Now, I could take my benefit early at 62 and get a reduced benefit at $2,100 a month. It's reduced because I have more paychecks, all right? So from 62 to 67, I get paid that's five years of paychecks where I wasn't getting paid anything. So to give me more paychecks, each paycheck is reduced. I could also wait till I'm 70 and I could take it, and I've given further fewer paychecks because I'm seven years old. I waited eight years. So that means there'll probably be eight less years to which to take Social Security. So to benefit me for it's all actuarially fair, they're going to say, we're going to give you more money per paycheck because we'll have to pay you less paychecks, if that makes sense. All right. Now, a lot of people, if you're married, you should consider waiting until you're 70. It depends on your situation. If you're single, probably not. But again, situation dictates. So if I take Social Security at, at full retirement age and I get a 2.4% COLA, the next year, my $3,000 a month grew to $3,072. All right. The next year grew to 3,145 with a 2.4% cost of living adjustment. And year one, two, three, four, I'm at 3,222. So I took my social security at my full retirement age, my benefit increased $222 a month. If I took social security early, not only was it reduced, my benefit only increased by $153 a month, all right? So we got, what's that, almost a 50% yeah, it's about a 50% increase in my benefit as, a, as, as in getting more money per month because I waited later. It's just it's a simple math. If I have $100,000, 2.4% growth is $2,400. If I have $100, 2.4% growth is $2.40. So this, this is nothing extraordinary, but people don't get, people don't look at this. So my benefit has increased by $222 a month. My benefit here has only increased by 153. Every month, I got an increase now, 72, 73, 77. Here is 50, 51, 52. And it gets progressively higher the more years I live. The longer I wait to take Social Security, the, the, the increases get higher and higher and higher because I have a bigger starting point a larger starting point in the amount of benefits I'd get. If I wait till I'm 70, the increase went to $274. 
So now by the time I'm uh, four years in, my $2,100 went to $2,253. My $3,700 went to $3,994. Does that make sense? That's significant. If we keep going on that, my, this will more than double this in just a couple years. You see the huge amount of income increase you get. Because remember, retirement is about income security. We want to protect the income. And if inflation is a concern of yours, then taking Social Security early makes no sense because you have a lower starting point, which means inflation is going to eat up more and more of your benefit. Why? Because you have such a low starting point. You'll get more rewards by waiting to take Social Security in terms of inflation. You can see right here, 222 versus 153 versus 274. If inflation is a concern of yours, then taking Social Security early doesn't make any sense. It just does not. Now, on the other hand, people say, yeah, but Josh, they still need to live on something from 62 to 67 or 70. Yeah, and the market's 8% a year. Oh, my goodness, stocks are long run. Oh, 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 oh. You know, uh, not Mal Keel. Jeremy Siegel. And I like Jeremy Siegel. So check this out. Here we got $500,000. And I'm just going to use, uh, what I use? Well, just, I think it's the S&P 500. That's Fidelity Balance Fund. This was Fidelity Balance Fund. That's what I used. All right. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I, I ran Wellington. I ran S&P 500. It's all pretty much the same. So we're going to take 5% 5, 5 a year out. 5% a year on 500,000 bucks gives us about, 20, about 2,100 bucks a month. All right. 2,100 bucks a month. Take it early. Social Security early. Now you can take 4% a year out. It's going to be the same thing. What happened in 1966 and 1980? We ran out of money. We're complete done here. We're done. We ran out of money. If we took 5% a year adjusted for inflation using the CPI, yes, I hate using CPI as, a, as my specific inflation because my inflation is different than your inflation, which is different than CPI. We're just going to run with it here because I don't know what your stuff is. So again, 5% a year, 20, roughly 2100 bucks a month. We ran out of money by 1980. All right. Now, watch this. If we did the S&P 500, we ran out of money by 1983. If we did the, um, I think I did the Putnam Income Fund, which is the, lo the longest uh, bond fund we can find. I think it started like 1950, something like that. It ran out of money in 1982, right? So Wellington ran out of money in 19, I think 80 as well, maybe 1981. It, it, what I'm trying to say is this money did not last for 15 years. Isn't that crazy? 2000, 2009, 500,000 bucks. At the end of 2009, you were down to 353. So you were down 28% over the course of a decade. And that's at the end of 2000. Uh, that's, no, that's March 9th of 2009. So at the, the end of 2009, you're up to about 375. But still, after a decade time, you were down 28% taking 2,000 bucks a month roughly from your portfolio. Yeah, and you still got to pay tax on that money too, by the way. This can be tax free, as I've shown before. So we're taking 2,000 bucks a month out. We're down to 355. Obama just got elected. He's got a super majority of Congress, of liberal Democrats with freaking stinking Pelosi. Uh, who is a, well, Harry Reid, you know, that scumbag Harry Reid is the majority leader in the Senate. And they were up to no good. No good. Uh, Eric Holder is DOJ. No attorney general, EPA, freaking, I just, it was bad. It was ugly. You cannot tell me at the end of 2009, you're like, yay. You were scared, dude. We all were. We all were. You were scared. You can't sit there and say, I'm just going to hold on. The next decade is going to kick ass because Barack is in charge. You know, if you're a big lib, you probably did. That's fine. I don't know how many big libs are on my channel here. But us normal people would not do. How dare you mix politics and financial planning? The idea that politics and financial planning don't mix is just stupid, dude. It's dumb. Do you not remember the supermajority the Democrats had back then? You know, people get nervous about Bo Jiden. I'm like, dude, I mean, they got enough to fill a bus or all kinds of crap in the Senate. You know, now be the Republicans, uh, name only, but they still, they control the House right now. So a lot of stuff is going to be DOA that Bo Jiden wants to propose. Now, Bo Jiden... You know, as a nefarious scumbag he is, you know, executive orders and all that. You know, Trump did executive orders. They all do executive orders. Um, hopefully the Supreme Court reigns some of that crap in, but be it as it may, nothing's getting legislatively approved uh, in, a, in a split Congress. It's just not happening. 
All right, on, so, but that's what, what it was in 2009. I, I don't think people remember how significant the supermajority of the Democrats had. And they could just barely get Obamacare through. Isn't that crazy? And then, of course, they got smoked in 2010. But no one knew that was going to happen, man. But Scott Brown won. Eh, that might have been a one-off. In fact, if anything, a lot of Republicans, look, cause I've, I've been active in the Republican Party for decades. A lot of Republicans were actually despondent of Scott Brown won. They liked it, you know, seeing we took ten, Kennedy's seat, but they, were, they said, oh, that's going to get the Democrats recognizing they're not going to waltz in in 2010 and gain seats. Just look in your old New York Times subscription, Washington Post subscription, if you go on newspapers.com, it was still thought the Democrats were going to gain seats in Congress, even though they had super majorities. And they got smoked, thankfully. No one knew that until about you know, September of 2010. Do not tell me you're sitting there thinking, ah, I can ride this out. You just weren't, man. You just weren't. I'm telling you, the difference between retirement and accum uh, decumulation and accumulation is the difference between night and day. You're putting money in, putting money in, putting money in. You see the portfolio fall. You're like, that's okay because I'm still putting money in. And by the way, I got income coming in for my job. When you're retirement, you're not putting money in. You're taking money out and there's no income coming in from your job. And you got to pay tax on that money too. Uh, 2022, 500,000 bucks was down to 382. Again, has come back. Yep, come back. We're back up to 500,000. Not even close. Not even close. We're not even looking at Japan here, by the way. Now we can look. Oh, you're cherry picking 1982. I am cherry picking what I'm saying. Because not to cherry pick, to say, wait a second, these are what happened in the real world. 1966 and 1980, we got skunked. 2000 and 2009, we still survived and we end up thriving in the next decade, but no one saw that coming, dude. And we. <laughs> So the issue is, if you retired in 1982, you're freaking hell's bells. Good, good for you, dude. You got lucky. You could have ride your port, rode your portfolio into freaking huge amounts of prosperity. And you could delay, you could take in Social Security and your portfolio would have done better than Social Security delayed would. 100%. If, you, if that was you. You didn't know that in 1982. Are you not familiar with the Business Week 1979, the death of equities? 1982, the Volcker is still friggin', everyone's still, oh, Volcker, what? There was huge riot when riots so were protests because the economy was on its back. We thought the commies were going to win. Paul Samuelson, the famed Nobel Prize economic uh, Nobel laureate in 1989, said communism will beat capitalism. He said that right before the, the commies fell. It's just people forget what they're, this, like, hindsight is always 2020. We always look at hindsight with rose colored glasses. That's just a fact. People forget what it's like, man. I'm just telling you, they do. And that's on top, that's not even, we're not even talking about the average top to bottom that happens on an average year, about 14%. And again, I look back to 2015, May to June of 2015, the markets were down about 15% and people were freaking out. July to mid-August of 2011, the markets are down about 18%, people are freaking out. Q4 2018, the markets are down 19.8% and people are freaking out. People forget all this stuff, dude. I'm telling you. Now, in hindsight, if you don't look at it, you're like, oh, no, the markets did great in 2018. No, it didn't. Markets did great in 2011, 2015. No, it didn't. I, I, see, this is different. I've been doing this for a long time, man. I see it, and I see it with my own eyes. When the reality of the market settles in and you're sitting there looking at this freaking abyss, you do not know what the future holds. You can make assumptions, that's great. Assumptions though, don't pay the bills if your assumptions are wrong and you happen to be in 1966 as opposed to 1982. You don't know that. You don't know if you're in 1966 or 1982, you don't know. But we do know income security, this rises each and every year with inflation. That's just a fact, Jack. On top of that, it's very tax favorable. Again, does that mean you should not take social security early? Not saying that. But I bet you're not familiar with the huge benefits of waiting to take Social Security. It gives you additional money each and every year, regardless of what the markets do. That's very tax favorable. That doesn't go down. It doesn't. To, to ignore that, just to look at this right here. 21, 3,000, Ah, if I lived on 78, uh, if I die before I'm 78, this will make sense. Yeah. It's more than just this. It's more than just actuarial tables. It's what happens later on. Look at this benefits, man. I'm just telling you, don't default to take Social Security as early as you can. That's a, I just think it's a horrible mistake. That doesn't mean you shouldn't, 
but don't pretend like your portfolio will grow better than Social Security. You don't know that. It could. You don't know that. I just, I literally sit there and I think, how do people just sit there and assume that the portfolio, because stocks are the long, I, it's nuts to me. Right. Love your thoughts. Uh, if you like these videos, you want to buy me a cup of coffee, put it in the show notes there. I got the Doobie Duke, five bucks, cup of decaf. If you want to buy me three or four, I'll be happy to take it off your plate there. I like my decaf. Sign up for my uh, channel, uh, my email list down below. And I go locals twice a week, live stream locals, five bucks a month. You can get on there, get on the, the gravy train. We go live stream in two hours roughly two hours, twice a week on locals, Wednesday and Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if, uh, and if you're on, you want to sign up for my locals, I'll get you access to right capital as well as a little bit of an incentive. Now, love your thoughts. See ya.